<laughs> there we go. <laughs> that doesn't happen too often in here. <laughs> hey guys, welcome to that pedal show. Dan here, Mick here, and, and Tor here. Yay! <laughs> that was awesome, dude. Thank you so much for coming. Hey, thanks for having me. Um, a little bit of history. Yes, unless you've, if you've been living under a rock for the last ten years, uh, eight. 14? Yeah, 10, 10 is probably yeah, about right. Yeah, ish. Yeah. Um, you won't know who Tor is. Okay. If you haven't been living under a rock, you will know that Tor is kind of the face of TC Electronic. Yes. Is that right? And what a face. <laughs> <laughs> Poor so, TC. <laughs> a, a little bit of history. Yeah. We launched, the gig we launched our first product back in 2004, and we were at a guitar show. We had no idea what we were doing. And Tor came up and had a chat, and back then you were Sean. Yes. Very short hair, looked yeah. very... Um, proper. Pro proper. Yes. Yes, and now he's turned into this rock star type <laughs> dude. It's the, it's the midlife crisis, I guess. I haven't quite gotten around to buying a Harley yet, but <laughs> I fear I might. Soon. Yes. I bought, I bought a motorcycle a couple oh, of years did? ago. Oh, you did? There you go. And we're the same age, we yeah, just found yeah, out, so there, there you, you go. go. There you go. Shall we, uh, first of all... Just a, yeah, a brief thing about your history with TC. Yeah. How that came to happen. Yeah. What what you do. I've been with TC for fifteen years. It's actually my anniversary year this year. And the first five years or four or five years, I worked there as a web designer, so right. as a web developer. And then TC is back in those days. TC was more of a studio company. So mm. we did you know high end studios, mm -hmm. big expensive rack effects. Um, we also did a bunch of stuff, and we still do for that matter for TV stations and stuff like that. Um, and guitar was, to be honest, a little bit of an afterthought. It wasn't that we right. weren't into guitar back then, but we... Because you had some very cool stuff. We like had the... G-System and we had G-Major, G-Force. But even before that, yeah. you had like the stereo flanger, yeah. which is like... The, the, the chorus, chorus flanger. From, flanger. Yeah. And, you know, TC started like that. So in 76, it was two brothers who basically, engineers, who basically started the company in right. classic boutique pedal style right. of, you know, I can't find a chorus pedal that sounds the way I want it to sound, so I'll build my own. And then there's a couple of guys who like that. And, you know, mm -hmm. that's the history of TC really. And were they called Trevor and Colin? Is that what uh, TC, <laughs> no. TC comes from? Nobody knows. I swear <laughs> to God, nobody knows. There's all, uh, there's, there are guesses that I can't say on, on okay. uh, in here, and there's like really boring ones, but... The, you literally don't know what TC stands no, for. And the two owners... That's uh, amazing. Won't, the two original founders won't say it to this day and we pressed them hard with snaps and stuff like that <laughs> never happened so I, I literally don't know wow which means that could be anything so whatever you think tc stands for total crap <laughs> yeah, that could be it <laughs> fantastic so the the famous 2290 yeah that was part of the studio that was part thing. of the studio package and that right. was really before that tc was pretty much an analog company right even though i think most guys today think of TC as a, you know, mm. a digital company, sure. one of the digital companies. Mm -hmm. um, well, arguably, as in digital pedals, you guys were the biggest seller of VEX pedals in the world last year. I think so. It's tough to say because we don't really get any kind of... I but think we do, we do pretty well, That I, is I would amazing. Say. Uh, even from a market perception point of view, I remember when the first TC Compact pedals, actually probably not allowed to say TC Compact, am I? But yeah, <laughs> that's fine. <laughs> um, when, the, when the first TC guitar pedals, Dan mentioned the 2290, which of course is associated with um, Robin Ford and loads of yeah. guitar players from mm -hmm. that era who just love that pristine delay with a little bit of modulation. Uh, and then uh, Tor also mentioned the Stereo Chorus Flanger, yeah. which I think celebrated an anniversary last year. Yeah, it was, um, oh God, 76, so that must be 40 years, right? And we ce I celebrated it by discontinuing the pedal. <laughs> there you go. Because of, <laughs> because of Rosh? Yeah, yeah. We can't get the parts anymore, unfortunately. Yeah. We, got one, we got one of the, so. Uh, anyway. So, so it's not like TC wasn't in the guitar world, but then all of a sudden when these kind of pedals started turning up, and then you guys were everywhere. I mean, market share... Yeah, it went, it went pretty... I don't know what happened. I mean, we, I guess, you know, whenever, you know, anybody who does products or does anything, you, mm. know, you know, when you do videos, you want as many viewers as possible and you try to come up with something that you hope people like. And the, the weird thing is, so when I started doing the pedal stuff, or guitar stuff for TC, because originally, as I said before, we were heavily focused on studio stuff. Mm -hmm. and, you know, when you make a product, 
and this gets a little bit like product nerdy, but the idea is typically you build some sort of platform. You don't start over every time. You build yes. a platform and you want to make a number of products mm -hmm. on that platform. So yeah. typically we would do back in the day, we'd do a 19 inch rack platform that we could do a number of products on. So mm -hmm. a delay, a yeah. compressor, a reverb, a multi-effect and so on. And typically once we've done like those products, we go like, oh, maybe we can do a guitar one. Right. So that was really, GeForce came out of that. Okay. It wasn't first option, to be honest. Mm. I mean, it's still like, you know, a classic multi-effect processor, one of the first ones for mm. guitar. Um, but it really was, there were other products that were more important to come up with because we're a studio company back then. And then with the decline of like high-end studios and the whole plug-in and digital and right. home studios, uh, the owners at TC at the time could kind of see you know, it's not really, it might be cool to be number one in the studio, high-end studio business, but if there is no business, it doesn't really matter yeah, if you're yeah, number yeah, one yeah. or number 10. So they, I don't know, maybe it's because I can't keep my mouth shut about stuff. They asked me if I might want to do that instead of doing web stuff. And, you know, that's a dream come true for anybody of who's course. nerdy about guitar stuff, I guess. So I said yes to that. Um, and coming up with some of these pedals over the years, I, I mean, I wouldn't have dreamt that they would be as successful as they were. That's that's but humbling. The the huge success of the TC pedal side of things started with you. Uh, the new breed of the... Yeah, it know. started with me and the engineers, I have to say. I, yeah, yeah. yeah but it's amazing. It is amazing. Yeah, I mean, in terms of technology, uh, for anyone who doesn't know... Actually, we should just say, if you... Um, Notice an accent on uh, Tor here it's because he <laughs> is he is from Denmark. Yes, uh, and <laughs> um, along with our good friend Danish Pete. <laughs> um, is that a thing you got to do every time? Or it, it's, we, we, it's, we have a one honk policy. Yeah, uh, we can mention the name once he gets a honk, but the, every time we mention Danish Pete, it, after that he we're fine. If it's somebody uh, famous okay. that we know and we we meet, we have to know them. With, we have to uh, know them and have a conversation. Okay, because quite often we'll be making a video and we'll be going, oh yeah, when I was hanging out with. <laughs> oh, good. Because it's just a massive name drop. Yes. And we can do that all day if yeah, you want yeah. to. Yeah, <laughs> so, so I think the horn's going to get honked a few times today. But anyway, so so Denmark, for anyone who doesn't know, is a country uh, to the right-hand side of England, north of Germany in Europe. Pete gets asked this a lot. Yeah. Where is Daneland? <laughs> Daneland, yeah. And what, what language do you speak yeah. there? Danglish. D yeah. Anyway, okay. So that's where Denmark is. It's a tiny country. Yes. But it has an incredible number of guitar effects. Yeah, it's kind significant of significant guitar yeah. effects manufacturers. And we're all good friends, is the other part of it. I mean, there's so many pedal companies coming out mm -hmm. now. It's like, you know, you open your eyes and, you know, there's like 10 new ones out there. But all of the Danish ones, or most of them at least, are. Um, I've been around for a while. Mm. So TC is kind of like the granddaddy, old mm. gray haired granddaddy. Uh, but. To the north, like half an hour's drive, is Carl Martin. Mm. Great company, great makes company. some great pedals, yep. really nice guys. Um, in the same city where TC is, is also Emma Pedals. Great. Reza Fratzitz. Yes. Awesome. Awesome, awesome pedal, yep. the Discombobulator. Discombobulator, a, yep. Awesome auto wire. Um, and the guy who makes them, Jan, is an old friend of mine from. Oh, cool. You know, he has, a, he has a guitar store. That's where I buy all my gear. Usually. Who is Emma? That's his daughter. That's his daughter. Oh, yes. Okay. Ah, I yeah. see. So there you go. And if you drive half an hour south, roughly, you get down to T Rex, who were also good friends of mine. Oh wow. Um, so we all know each other. And there's a couple of new ones, Luna Stone, in, in case. Yeah, you. yeah, yeah. And there are actually drive. a couple of old TC guys who, who are oh, wow. part of that thing. So it's all one big happy family. <laughs> <laughs> Fabulous. Yeah. But it's, it seems to be that TC. Uh, sorry, that was a bit of a tangent. But back to the thread. The, the the driving of technology, the growth in the company, the amount of R and D you guys must have done to come out with things like tone print. Tone and... prints. Yeah, well, yeah, it's. I, I usually look at it from the other side because there's so many companies out there that I and I'm not I'm not dissing them in the sense that they make some great pedals and they sound good, but mm. they also have amazing marketing. Yes. And I always found that we pretty much suck at marketing. So we need to come up with something else instead to kind of make things interesting. And I don't mean that. Sorry, marketing team. You're, you're, <laughs> you're, you're awesome. Amazing. <laughs> yeah. no, but well, see, we, I always thought you were the marketing guy because you're front and center of the video. Yeah, no, not really. Yeah, yeah. I, there's a marketing team and I sit in marketing. Um, some of the time I also sit in engineering. Um, yeah. But I'm not really a marketing guy. I was, 
I'm a product manager is the official title, right. which basically means that I am the head of no persons, but I'm the head of the products. <laughs> so if something you relates to the product, they okay. have to ask me. Yeah. So, you know, here's a new video. Is this, is this how you want it? Yes, that's cool. Here's how the pedals, you know, here's how we are with the pedal. Is the color right? I'll tune them. And I, in general, I'm the one who comes up with the stuff. Right. With a lot of help from the engineering team, because I don't know engineering at all. I couldn't solder like a cable, to be honest. Okay, let's talk about tone print. Yeah. Because when I first heard about that, it blew my mind. But then when I saw how you actually get the tone print uh, into then, the pedal. Yeah. So this is this is your idea? Uh, the tone print, uh, the actual tone print concept is yeah. my idea. The actual... The beaming, crazy beaming thing is not my idea. I wouldn't right. know how to do that because... Okay. There you go. It will happen. Keep talking. Okay. Yeah. So that whole thing actually came about. So we have a product called G-System. And yes. around eight, nine years ago, I was kind of thinking about some new products to do and I wanted to do a G-System too because it's been around for a while. Mm -hmm. And now I can actually kind of tell it's been around for even longer because we still haven't gone around to that. But that's a pretty expensive, like high-end mm. multi-effect product. And then right around that time, the whole market crashed. So it was, you know, mm -hmm. nobody had any money. I'm like, oh, damn, that maybe it's not the best time to come out with a $2,000 multi-effect processor. So I'm kind of looking around for some other things to do. And I was thinking that, you know, maybe we should try to do some pedals instead, like single effect pedals that are really simple. Because even though TC had even more so back in the day, mm -hmm. uh, back around that time, we made pretty complicated products. It was mm -hmm. also a lot of, always a lot of press and hold mm -hmm. and presets and you know all this stuff. And uh, I'm very much a simpleton. So I actually wasn't making products for myself as much as I was making products in like the TC spirit, so to speak. Right. So I was like, oh, let's, let's try to change that. I want to make some products that are more the way I like them and maybe change what TC is about. Mm -hmm. um, so I was thinking about that and we made them really simple, but at the same time, what kind of annoyed me was that when I'd go into a guitar shop and you know, you'd look behind on all these great pedals that are here, you know, you guys probably have some favorites among all these pedals. So you, you line up all the delays or you line up all the overdrives and you're like, this is the one for me. And this sounds good, mm -hmm. but it's just not right. Mm -hmm. They're not quite right. What I found was that it's typical, tiny little differences. Yeah. It's not yeah. like, you know, one sounds like completely crazy, silly and the yeah. other one is amazing it's typically oh, i just like the way the decays trail or yeah. i like the just eq the, yeah, a little bit yeah, 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 yeah. and i'm like you know as as pedal designers we make so many choices mm. for the customers mm -hmm. we go this is the way it's supposed to sound and you might you know yeah you you will hit somebody who find that's the perfect sound mm -hmm. but there will be just as many or many more that won't exactly like it so i'm like what if you could actually change that what if you could actually dial it in exactly the way you want it instead? Mm. So that was the first idea that basically kind of birthed the whole uh, tone print concept was the idea that you could actually change how the pedal sounds. So you make it simple and you can totally use the pedal as is. It's still that way. You don't have mm -hmm. to dabble with the whole tone print stuff. There's a bunch of different sounds that mm -hmm. I tune and if you like them, cool. If not, well, that's the next step. Mm -hmm. Because the first, the first idea was basically to go straight from there to an editor that you could open up and just go nuts. And I got a little afraid about that because it's it's quite a daunting task to open that up and right. kind of look at all this stuff. And if you don't know if you don't know about effects and how you you know how is a chorus actually made in terms of like, you know, the actual splitting of the signal and yeah, modulation and yeah, all that stuff. All that yeah, stuff yeah, yeah. LFOs and things like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, it can be a little hard dialing that in. So it's kind of thinking about the fact that if you buy a signature pedal. So let's say you you buy an MXR Phase 90. Yeah. And then you buy the MXR Phase 90 Eddie version. It's roughly the same. It's the same pedal with a few tweaks. Mm -hmm. So I was kind of thinking, what if we could do the same thing, but instead of actually having to buy the pedal and the whole, you know, the signature and, you know, it's a little bit sometimes having signature pedals like this. Yeah. It's a little bit like putting a, a poster on your wall saying, I love, yeah, I yeah, love this course. guy. Yeah. Um, so I was kind of thinking, what if we could do the same thing, but instead of having to buy the pedal, you basically just load it in digitally instead. Yeah. So and that basically became the tone print idea of talking to all these artists. The funny thing is, when when I came up with that idea, and we'll get all these amazing artists, and they'll do all these sounds, and it'll be for free because they just love TZ, and they'll be all happy. 
whenever I present a new product, I have to go to the owners of TC and go like, <laughs> you, it's like an elevator pitch. So you go like, yeah, here's yeah. two minutes, this is why it's cool. And I remember s saying all this stuff and in the back of my mind, I'm going like, it all sounds great, but how the hell are we going to get all these artists <laughs> to do this? This is impossible. <laughs> I was like, I'm setting myself up to fail. Like, if I, was thinking that, I was thinking the same thing. You're going to the bosses saying, right, what we're going to do is give people a reason to only buy one pedal instead of five. <laughs> yeah. And we're going to make all these sounds available for free, and they're going to be free. Yeah. <laughs> and the bosses are going, <laughs> I don't, yeah, I don't just, know. We've thrown away that, sounds, that sounds wrong. <laughs> <laughs> but you did it. And that's, I'm, I'm constantly, so quick recap on, on Tone Print. If you haven't seen Tone Print, um, we've we've looked at it a few times on, on that pedal show, but um, it's an app that you can get, I guess, for Android and for yeah. iOS. Yeah. Um, and you can choose your product. So what have we got on there? We have a flashback uh, delay, so we can choose the flashback delay. And up comes a whole load of different sounds done by famous people, done by um, TC, Andy Summers there, Ollie Freed, some really, really cool guys in there. Brent Mason, there's Paul Gilbert. There's... This is where you'd actually yeah, go. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and you can, just, you can just keep going with the, with the horns. It's a staggering array of artists. And just sorry, just to finish that. So you, you pick one, um, you go, I want Charles Cave's slow dive uh, tone print. You hold it over the pickup of the guitar. Right. So that's the okay. Name. It's on, you don't even have to press anything. And Dan loves this bit. Okay? Okay. And the sound is now in the pedal, right? Yeah, so it's beamed in there. And that wasn't me who came up with that. That was that was basically I took the entire engineering team out for a, to this brewery and we had way too many beers and we've been talking about having an app where you could basically load in the tone prints because when mm -hmm. it came out you could only do it using your computer mm -hmm. which is why every single pedal still comes with a usb cable yeah um, yes. but it's kind of annoying having to drag your computer around for that stuff so, so if you want to about, make a, a preset for yourself you can still you can still do that but the actual in the beginning loading a new tone print you'd have to do the same thing with the cable right so we we're thinking about that and the first kind of rule we had was you, it can't be that you have to buy some kind of special cable because right. we know nobody is going to get around yep. to mm -hmm. doing that. It mm -hmm. has to be some kind of wireless way. And seeing as there's no Bluetooth or no Wi-Fi, it's like, damn, how can we do that? And I can't remember. One of the engineers kind of went like, do you remember back in the day when the very first remote controls for TCs actually played sound? So you had like four channels in your TV. He's an old guy. So it, they, it would go like, do, 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 do and the TV would actually recognize the sounds. Right. And no. it would change the channels based on that. And, every and then we started talking about 56K modems, which you yeah. guys... Yeah, yeah, uh -huh. dial up. And, you know, all those sounds are basically the web page encoded, the data encoded as audio. So right. what you actually hear is actually the HTML code kind of being transferred through the modem. And that's, that is converted. The audio is converted to the actual web page that you see. Wow. I never knew that. All right, so there you go. So it, the tone print is the same thing. So we went, what if we could encode all the parameters as audio and send that into the pickup? Because the pickup is basically a magnetic microphone mm -hmm. and a speaker, not the actual cone, but the actual magnetic, what do you call that in English? The, the coil or whatever it is. Yeah. The, the thing that moves the speaker, right? The voice coil. Yeah. The voice coil, yeah. Um, it's a magnet. Mm. So if the Apple guys and the Android guys didn't seal their phones well enough, magnetic gauze would in theory be able to escape the phone and actually be picked up by the, uh, by the guitar pickup and we'd be able to transfer it that way. So the sound that you hear when you do this doesn't really matter. You could remove the, uh, you could remove the paper cone. It's just the magnetic vibration that's, no. that's important. So you could, if you put it on silent, can you still do it? No, because the silent thing will actually turn off the vibration ah, as well. But if I you, if you okay. imagine right. that you just re you have just the magnetic bit move without this, I mean, it's the it's the cone that pushes the air so you can hear it. That thing is, you can yell over it. It doesn't matter. Okay, got it. So you can do it in any kind of noisy environment because it's not the actual sound. It's not the loudness right. of the sound. It's the, it's the changing of the magnetic field. Yes. Uh, yeah. That's the same amazing. Way that you, the same way that you can't, well, sometimes you can if you have a, uh, you know, a microphonic pickup, but typically you can't yell into your microphone, uh, yeah, into yeah, your yeah. pickup and yeah. hear anything. Oh my God. Can we just hear what Charles Cave sounds like? we got to set it to the tone print setting. And it will be in? Uh, it should be, yeah.
Actually, so I guess now would be a good time to talk about some new products. Yes, now um, that we have them here. You uh, surprised everyone, I think, with these new switches. So the idea is that the foot switch doubles as an expression pedal. Yeah. Come on in. Let's That's hear it. That's okay. amazing. So, so we can, if you put it to like the classic, you know, really quick pitch on how this works is that on this setting, you can change it to anything you want. So right. depending on which type of uh, delay you choose, mm -hmm. it'll do different things. Mm -hmm. um, so I set another tape one now, and if I press it down now, what's going to happen is that as soon as I engage the mesh thing, which basically will happen when I put pressure on the foot switch, mm -hmm. it'll change, take the feedback and crank it all the way up, and I'll be able to control the delay time just by changing the, the pressure of the foot switch, which will give you that kind of classic, you know, self-oscillating spaceship sound. There you go. That is awesome! <laughs> Come on! That is awesome! Come on, do that again, Dan. Yeah. So it knows, it knows that I want to mash. Yeah. Incredible. How does it know you want to mash and you don't want to turn the pedal on and off? Um, so when you turn it when it's off and you turn it on, it reacts on yeah. what we call press in geeky development terms, which basically means that when it's pressed down, it'll engage mm -hmm. yeah. immediately. If you, I'll do the same thing. If I press it down and I hold it down okay. for roughly 300 milliseconds, after that, the pedal will go, oh, you probably want to mesh. So it's with the release so, time. And then when you turn it off again, the re it doesn't turn off on press, it turns off on release. Yeah. Okay. So you notice yeah. this. Yes. So that basically means that if I press it down and I hold it enough, the pedal will go, oh, you probably don't want to turn it off, you want yep. to engage mesh. But if you do it fast... It'll turn off. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So that's how it works. So the only, you know, if you're really used to doing like the pedal off on press, there's yeah. a little bit of a learning curve to that. Otherwise, it's it's pretty self-explanatory. That, that is unreal. So at the moment, you say you had the delay time parameters on the mesh switch, but you can have other things as you well? You can have anything. So we can try some different ones. So yeah. here is the, uh, we can try, here's like the reverse one. So what we do with this one is that we basically kill, we just set it like this, there you go. So when you press it down, we kill the dry signal, so you can get that kind of backwards guitar sound. So oh, if you play normally, man. it's just like backwards, uh, you know, reverse. <laughs> That's unreal. That is unreal. I, so I um, just recently I did a couple of Hendrix tribute gigs and we were doing uh, Are You Experienced, which has some reverse. Yeah. I guess it's probably reverse reverb, but yeah. anyway, whatever it is, I was it was I was trying to find something that would do the reverse. Yeah. But I didn't have to have a whole pedal just for that one job. There that it will, is. That will do it. And I, I, it I use it for that trick, specifically doing the Hendrix stuff as well, because it's fun to play regular, and then you can just throw in a couple of backwards things, and then you're back to. Get me some fuzz on, Dan. Yes. Isn't that awesome? Oh, how cool is that? And the amazing thing is, there is still there's enough um, there's enough leeway in that pressure area that you can feel it changing as you change the pressure. So if you want to if you want to get a little nerdy as to how this actually works, so we, there's a lot of ways you can actually measure pressure, mm -hmm. which is essentially what it is. Um, what we really not wanted to have happen was that you actually kind of apply force to the actual circuit board. Yes, so we looked sure. at different ways of doing it, and we actually ended up with a magnet solution. So there's two magnets, one in the 
I'm a part of the Switch. It's mm -hmm. always it's magnets. It's always if, if magnets. If it's not sky hooks or magic, <laughs> it is always <laughs> yeah. magnets. And there's a magnet in the bottom part. Right. So the closer they get to each other, the more magnetic gauze is built up and we translate that into an expression signal. Very um, cool. the, the cool thing about that is that you don't have to have the two magnets touch each other mm -hmm. ever. So the gift you feel here is actually a little rubber uh, gasket. And it's just changing that, that magnetic field. And so that must be a tiny amount of travel, is it? It's yeah, yeah. minuscule amount but of you, travel. But as you feel it changing, you, you, can, yeah. you can feel the, the effect like you did with the speed and that before. Yeah. That's incredible. And it well, seems that gasket wear, is that, is that a part that we'll need replacing, do you think? No, no, no. Or it's fine. It's just because there's no kind of, it doesn't rotate or anything like yeah, that. Yeah. You just depress it and, and... That is so clever. So yeah, that, that it's been a fun thing to work on. Dude, and I think that is amazing. With the, to me at least, and the whole, the whole idea why this came about was that when we started working on replacements or, you know, version twos of Hall of Fame and Flashback, mm. I was kind of going through all the different requests that we get on our Facebook page and stuff mm, like that. Yeah. Oh, it'd be great if it had that. And, you know, for the Hall of Fame, it's like, oh, please put Shimmer in. And, yeah, you know, yeah. For the flashback, it's like, can it, you know, can it please do like the, you know, the, the pitch wobble thing that like old analog and tape echoes do. So we added these things. And one of the other requests was actually adding expression inputs to the pedals. I'm like, sure, that's easy. It's the easiest thing in the world to do. Mm. The problem is that, you know, looking on Instagram or go going on the gear page and actually looking at pictures of pedal boards, I never see anybody having expression pedals hooked up to their pedals, or very rarely yeah, at least. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it Because it's another, it's another thing you've got to set up. It's a and commitment. It's isn't absolutely. It? Yeah. Plus, I mean, you have a pedal this size, and then you want an expression pedal this size next to it, just yeah. for that one. Yeah. How many times in a set? Are you going to need yeah. to change that? Yeah. So we were like, I mean, the idea is cool and it's a lot of fun to work with mm. once you actually set it up, but it's just the practical implications of yep. it is a little ugh. So we're like, maybe we can build it into the pedal somehow. And we had all sorts of crazy ideas for how to do that. And we ended up with this solution for doing it. And I think at least, you know. The Did you come up with the solution of having a built in theremin so that you just go, woo? <laughs> Damn you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not saying anything more about that subject. <laughs> Maybe someday. Really? Oh, man. He shoots his scores! <laughs> <laughs> wow, I didn't see that coming. Yep, we... Dude! Very cool. Well, we can... You know, I would say we can enter that out, but no, no come no, on, no. that it's was awesome. Fine. Yep, that, is, that was interesting. Yes? Wow. That's, a, that's awesome. But I, and I think in general, the cool thing is the fact that, you know, a lot, a lot of times if you hook up an expression pedal to a pedal, oftentimes, you know, the parameters you can choose, unless you're, you know, crazy, like my good buddy from Chase Bliss, and you just give every option uh, in the world. Um, Joel Corty. Yeah, Joel is... <laughs> Joel is crazy. Man, Such a he's nice unreal. Guy. Yeah. So, um, but a lot of times when you hook up an expression pedal mm. to a pedal, it's very limited in terms of what you can do. Yep. The mm. parameter is yep. set, the range is set. Yep. That's pretty much it. Yep. But with the combination of the tone print and the mesh thing, it's basically available to any artist who does tone prints. They can choose whatever they want to control with the mesh switch. Uh, if you download the editor for yourself, you can totally decide what you what you want to use so it for. So it could be anything from the delay level to the output of the pedal yep. to... Any single parameter that's in there and you can control up to three parameters at the same time and you can uh. actually, you can even control... So basically there's three, four pressure levels. So the pedal basically starts at like very little pressure and then yeah. it goes up to 10 kilos. And so we basically set four pressure levels from yep. 0 0.1, mm -hmm. around three, around six and 10, something like that. And you can actually decide the value for each parameter for those pressure levels. Wow. So, so you, you can, can create your own curve. Or That's unbelievable. unreal. So how, so how hard you like to press. Yeah. Amazing. Which is very important. If you're wearing very pointy shoes, which some of us do. But. Yeah, like that. <laughs> <laughs> the pressure that you can get right at the end of the tip is quite low. So <laughs> yeah, you need. <laughs> <laughs> and if you wear combat boots, you want to you want to do something else. That's very I cool. It. Yeah. So I love it. It's obviously the mash switch makes makes that compelling as a version two. Did you say you put another sound in there as well? Yeah, sound? there's a lot of new stuff in there. So if we want to go over the really quickly. Yeah. So mash is obviously like a new thing. The other thing that probably the biggest request we got was basically um, improved uh, 
tape and analog echoes. Right. Um, and we basically, we had a guy just work for like way too much time, basically recreating analog and, and tape uh, delay circuits. Come on then, Dan. Can I ask a question? Is yeah. this a, just a range of delay times? Um, it is a is it pre delay. It, it's it's a range of delay times. So if you like your to tap your delay tempo, yeah, mm -hmm. you can actually hook up an expression uh, no, a tap tempo foot switch to the stereo input. Okay. If you don't use that. And then you can tap the tempo. So what this does is in the butt top position, if you tap quarter notes, you get quarter note delays. If you tap quarter notes, but you set it to the middle position, you get dotted eight notes. If you tap uh, the bottom one, if you tap there, you get quarter notes plus dotted eight notes. So like classic U2. And... Dude, okay. So, right. Oh, man. That's, that, so that is... It is so clever. Okay, here's a question. <laughs> yeah. Here's a question. Sorry, I want to have a listen to this first then. Okay. That's cool. Sorry, I disappeared because I thought we had a. Oh. A, a... Well, I'll. It's I'll, okay. We can. We can show it some other time. Do that yeah, another day. Also, you have to. The thing is, once you do that, the pedal turns mono even on the output. That's okay. one little restriction, and I have. You have to set it up in the editor. So I'd have to plug in the editor and just go sure. little tick box. It's. I mean, we've always loved the sound of the flashback. We've used the mini on the show quite a lot. Yeah. Can you tell me? I I find this really interesting talking to uh, engineers and people who are involved in this. So the analog dry through. Yeah. When you were coming up with these things, was that something that you said, look, we absolutely have to have that. Yeah. We've got to you we've got to retain that integrity. Yeah. Because as a guitar player, you yeah. you know yeah. that's important, yeah. right? So I mean it, it it the funny thing is that the first products I worked on when I started as a product manager was the Nova pedals. Mm. Right. I don't know if you guys remember them. Yeah, I, yeah. You know, yeah absolutely. Still still pretty proud of those pedals. But it Basically, the whole the whole platform was made before I started, so it's more a matter of here's a here's a pedal. Mm -hmm. It has five knobs. It has some buttons, and this is you know it's stereo. Go figure out how it's you know find out how what pedals you want to do, what effects you want to do, and what the UI should be. But it has to use these things because mm -hmm. we can't change that. And there are a couple of things on there that I feel like oh man, two bypass sure would have been nice, and especially the fact that they're all digital all the time. They mm. don't they don't have the uh, not even when you turn them off are they analog. They're always digital. Um, and the fact that it didn't have analog drive through. So I basically I just knew that when I got the chance to actually make my own my own pedal platform, which is you know pretty much what what this is, that mm. I knew I wanted these things in there. Because it's it's funny because every time we've used them, you, I mean you know we're doing the tone print stuff, but they just sound great. Can, and you, just do, can you just do a very brief explanation of what that means, Dan? Analog drive through we're talking about. So what? Okay. Actually, why don't you do? Why don't you explain it? I can do it. It's pretty easy. So basically, if you imagine, you know, back in the old days, you'd have Clapton. He took his Les Paul, he plugged it into a Marshall, and he was happy. That's all there was to it. Now, as, as, when you start adding pedals, obviously you can change the sound in certain ways because you go through circuitry. Mm -hmm. um, and when you have digital pedals, which is what we make. Um, as soon as you turn them on, a lot of pedals basically turn your entire signal into digital. So basically zeros and ones. And as guitar players, even though it might be silly to a lot of guys, and Lord knows I've talked to the engineers out at TC a lot of times about this because they don't understand. And I'm just, you don't have to understand, you just have to do it. <laughs> but I like the, him so much. The, the, idea of, the idea of turning your lovely analog signal into zeros and ones doesn't make me happy. No. And you know whether it's there's any merit to it or not, sound wise doesn't really matter mm. because it doesn't make me happy. Um, and so what we do with all the digital pedals is that 
even when the pedal is on, we basically only take the wet part of the signal mm -hmm. and convert it to digital. The analog, or the, the dry part, always remains analog, even when the pedal is on. So, you know, in the case of, I don't know if I have any sound on here. So, you know, when you listen to the sound of this thing here, there's two parts to it. There's the actual guitar that I, you know, the sound that I play, and then there's what the pedal does, which mm -hmm. is all the repeats. So the first note you hear that I play is all analog, and it's only the repeats that come after the web part that's actually digital. Okay. So that is that is analog drive-through in, in essence. And there are some benefits to it. So um, apart from the fact that it's just nice to know, because you know it's the same reason we like vinyl and all this stuff. Mm -hmm. um, converting something from analog to digital, and then back from digital to analog again, will actually take a little time. It's a very short amount of time, yeah. but it will actually yeah. take a little mm -hmm. time. If you have one pedal, it's nothing. It's I think on TC pedals, it's 0 0.3 milliseconds, which mm -hmm. is like stupid little. Yeah. You won't be, it's, it's the same as if I walk to the end of the room and the latency from the amp speaker hitting to actually hitting, yeah. it's the same, so it's nothing. But if you imagine you stack like 10 of them after each other and yeah. they all convert it all the time, you'd start to feel it, you'd actually start to feel a little later. Let's see, yep. The other thing that's a benefit to doing this way is that doing that conversion also inevitably adds some hiss. Depending on how much is depending on the quality of the converters and the yes. whole uh, yes. circuitry, but it will add a little bit. Mm -hmm. So if you convert the entire signal, you will get more hiss than if you only convert half the signal. Yeah. And then presumably if, if you're then generating extraneous noise, you then have to fix that. Yeah. So then there's other things you there's have to other, do. Yeah, yeah. And, and again, if you stack more pedals, yeah. yes, you'll add more noise. And another thing to consider again is if you have pedals that are all digital in front of drive pedals, mm. then you actually take that noise that they generate from the ADDA conversion, yeah. and you boost that and by, gain. you gain it up mm. by a thousand times, which will often have in a drive pedal. Mm -hmm. We've so, talked about this on the show many times, mm -hmm. about noise and everything, yeah. and yeah, okay. So, so impressed. Let's have a look at the um, the updates of the Hall of Fame. Yeah. Uh, because this is a classic. If I first had a play of this when I did Guthrie Govan's board <laughs> for, Stephen, for Stephen Wilson. You could actually tell before you were ready. <laughs> I and didn't actually name know. drop I was, was coming up. I was, about, I was checking my notes on the floor. <laughs> and, I just, yeah. and the thing that impressed me so much, because uh, Stephen Wilson's gig is... Ooh. Is more about reverbs than delays. Yeah. And he could do the whole gig with the Hall of Fame. Yeah. Just by changing things here. Yeah. And it was, you know, amazing. Um, so, the, the and then the Hoff, the mini Hoff, which yeah. is just the. I mean, was that an accident that it was just called the Hoff? Oh. Uh, basically, there wasn't room to write Hall of Fame on it, so we, we'll just. We'll basically. Just, you know. But it became the Hoff, yeah. you know, and that's <laughs> yeah. just the coolest yeah. thing ever. Yeah. Um, so, it's a classic pedal. So now, what are we? What's different with the Hall of Fame? Before we do anything, I want to hear the mod. It's my favourite setting on this pedal. I use one of these. You will know it because it's exactly the same. We didn't change that. Very subtle on that one because I, I actually I, I was so pleased with that sound that I didn't want to, didn't want to make it l yeah, yeah. less modulated when you didn't have the mesh engaged, and I didn't want to have it, yeah, much more modulated when you right. engage it. So it it does do a little thing. It basically changes the speed yeah. of the modulation to make it slightly more modulated, but right. but not a lot. It's on the subtle side. I was just afraid of messing with it yeah. because I think that's, I stumbled onto something with that with that sound. I, I use the uh, original Hall of Fame and that's that's the how I have it set on the, right. on the mod setting. Okay, so come on then. Let's talk about some where, where are we mashing on here then? Okay, so um, we can try the uh, if we do the shimmer one we can try that because that's that basically is two of the new things in this pedal. There's three things so it's easy to remember. There's mesh, yeah there's shimmer 
So it's basically taking the octave up part of a sub and up octave mm -hmm. um, and adding that to the uh, to the algorithm to the rebuild algorithm, so we can right. pitch up the octaves for you know classic shimmer shoegazer type sounds. Um, and those two things work together. So if you try playing now. <laughs> So you can That's hear it. awesome. So you can fade in more of the octave effect. That's so cool. I will just say, you'll have, you'll have noticed Tor's hand shaking a bit because he's pushing so hard. Yeah. Obviously, your foot's a lot heavier than your hand. Yeah, it's <laughs> it's not really designed for for. No, no, no. Okay. Can I feel it? Let me feel it. I want to feel it on my foot. Yeah. Play down. It's so clever. I I delib so we've had these pedals for a couple of weeks and we deliberately haven't plugged them in because I wanted him here when we did it, so that we did it right first time, so that we got the full effect. That cool. is crazy good. Yeah. Yeah, that's a, that's a nice one, for it's sure. It's amazing. And again, depending on which setting you choose, so that's two of the new things, it's mesh, mm -hmm. uh, and, and it's the, the shimmer, shimmer effect, and depending on you know what setting you choose, like on the flashback, you'll have different types of effects. So if mm -hmm. we take the church one, for example. <laughs> Oh man, it's, it's, it's beautiful, isn't it? There's music in there, you know, because there's so many pedals with due respect to every pedal ever built because it's a labor of love and all the rest of it. So many pedals that are kind of just pack the features, pack the features, pack the features. For us, uh, use the word simpleton earlier. Yeah. I'm the same. And for a simpleton like me, I can I can press that and it does something that goes, okay, this is music now. Yeah. Mm. This is inspiration. This yeah. is, I can see where this is going to yeah. work. It's very cool. It's fun. And it, it, it to me, the, the main thing I'm actually looking forward to, because, you know, when you, when you do effects, or, you know, the same if you build amps so or you, you make yeah. guitars or any kind of product that relates to music. What you really want to do is you want to hear people make music with your products. Of course. And I, you know, I think with the mesh thing, the thing that I'm most excited about is just hearing people actually use it in real time. Because mm. I think, you know, yeah. with my limited creative resources, I've only scratched the surface of what you can actually do with this. So I'm looking forward to somebody who can actually turn it into real music. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. So that's, that's been a lot of fun. So the last thing, we mentioned there's three things. The yeah. last thing is that, and this goes for both of them, there's three tone print slots. So it's basically, when we came up with the original version of the pedals, I was a little afraid of adding too many tone print slots because nobody knew what it was back then. Mm. Yeah. And I was afraid of people going like, what's all this weird stuff there? I just want like, church and plate and spring you know the regular stuff mm -hmm. so we only put one in there and ever since people have been oh please can we have some more right. so now there's three and that obviously also the fun thing about that is it enables us to do some more little bit crazier sounds because people can always change them again to something else yeah. if these the other ones the regular ones always always stay the same you can't change the spring one but on the other ones we can do some weird things <laughs>
Just, just that is mega. Just, that is mega. Just for the record, the only thing you were hearing there was an overdrive pedal and the Hall of Fame too. That's it. That was it. There was no yeah. delay. There was no other monkeying around. Man. That's very cool. So so cool. So we can try the other two ones. If I can see what's in here. We got to try the last one as well because it, that's a that's a fun one. And I was actually a little afraid of putting that in there because it's kind of odd. So if you try playing something now, okay. There's no sound, and the reason is that you actually with this one you actually control the input level into the delay. So think of it as a volume pedal. So you've got a swell. Yeah, it's a swell effect, but you control it yourself with your foot. It's not an auto swell. You just basically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a load That's... of awesome synthy sounds without having to get a synth. Yeah. <laughs> and Dan's new prog rock album has just, <laughs> has just taken shape. <laughs> it's called The Flightless Steinhardt. <laughs> oh, mate. It's epic. That is epic. It is. It's pretty epic. It's and for epic. the guys you who go like, you must be delighted. I am. I'm. I'm pretty damn happy. And it's the fun thing is, you were supposed to be out at Nam, mm. and I was like really excited about that and then they got delayed because of you know we had to work things out with all the yeah. mesh stuff and mm. they got delayed and delayed and delayed but i'm really happy that they're finally out because we worked on them for so much time but i'm i'm really happy with the results of this thing thing uh, is but you can tell the time's been spent on getting it to sound great and making the functionality of it just so smooth and and simple i mean i'm literally just putting my foot on and just leaning yeah and it and it just does things it's amazing <laughs> yeah and it's a different frame of mind isn't it because uh if you're a certain frame of mind as a guitar player you want everything absolutely predictable and the same every time and all the rest of it and you want it to be exactly right that's one frame of mind the other frame of mind is actually i want this to be a bit more free and creative yeah. and i want to experiment and there is an element of improvisation yeah. involved there and i think this i mean i guess you could learn how to use them and get the same effects each time but there is an element of that unpredictability. Yeah, which and that's is the exciting. fun part. Stuff happens every time, and you go like, "Oh, that's I didn't predict that." And the thing I have to say is that you know, obviously, when you go to the tone print stuff, on both of these, they will go a little crazy because mm. those yeah, are yeah. the ones where we can change them. So I've, I don't, I'm not as afraid of of adding something where people go like, well, "Okay, yeah, what, yeah, is, yeah, what yeah. are the guys in Denmark been smoking now?" <laughs> um, whereas for the regular ones, you, you know, your rooms, your halls, your springs, your plates, like the bread and butter ones. Basically, all you're doing with the mesh switch is changing the the mix mm -hmm. a little bit because I don't want to I don't want to turn a spring into some kind of weird monster yeah, that yeah, does all this crazy stuff. Yeah. yeah. So you know, try to kind of keep the guys who just like their you know the basic stuff and yeah. you know. But if you wanna... want that, you can you can go and create create your own one, you put can, it in your yeah. tone print. Yeah. 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 You can totally do that. It's just it's or you so can download cool. anybody yeah. else's tone. And we can yeah. We'll, yeah. We'll, you know. We already started working with some guys on, on making tone prints for these where we utilize the mesh switch for, for fun stuff. And, you know, depending on who you work with, mm. you'll get different sounds. It's very different working with, you know, Lee Ronaldo compared to J.D. Simo or something like that. It's totally different. <laughs> totally different frames of mind in terms of, you know, 
playing and yeah. you know yeah, yeah. sound aspiration, so to speak. What if we could see a Daniel Steinhardt tone print coming up fairly soon? We, we can always. Do we know do anyone that. who can make that make that happen? We can make that happen. We can do a Mick one as well. <laughs> okay, all right. That's where I was going with it. No. <laughs> Okay, Let's do right. that. Right, so we are running long today. Sorry. This yeah, is, this sorry. is going long. No, this is no. all good. We've got two more pedals to look at, and we'll do those uh, fairly briefly. There's one more question that I think um, everybody probably wants us to ask you, and that is about TC's relationship with Beringer. Yes. So TC was acquired wholly by Beringer? Yeah. So TC was actually, TC Electronic was part of a, another company called TC Group mm -hmm. before we got acquired. Um, which was partly owned by one of the founders of TC and two other guys. Um, and they decided to sell the company at some point, um, around three years ago, um, and did so. And there was a number of bidders. It was very exciting times. Mm. Um, but we, in the we end... Put, we put our resources together, but we, did. we just... Yeah. <laughs> we just got a bit so close. You, <laughs> you did the due diligence and then you kind yeah. of backed out of it. Yeah. Um, but in the end, uh, Music Group, which yeah. is the holding company for Behringer and Midas and Turbosound and Bugera and a number of different mm. companies, bought um, TC Group. Mm. So TC Group is now part of of Music Group, which means that they now have TC Electronic, mm -hmm. uh, TC Helicon, which does effects as well, but for vocal. No, yeah. oh, we haven't even yeah. talked about TC Helicon. If you, we won't talk about it, but if you're interested in singing and vocals and vocal processing and harmony and all that, please check out TC Dude, Helicon. It's cool the stuff. Unbelievable yeah. stuff. So, and we also have uh, Lab Group, Swedish company doing like super high power uh, power amplifiers for mm. live touring and stuff right. like that. Tannoy. Oh, uh, right. Old traditional hi-fi studio yeah, yeah, yeah. PA company mm -hmm. is also part of that now so it's a big big company so things right. have changed things have definitely changed mm -hmm. and you know I, I won't be lying and saying that everything has just been like you know a happy dance with flowers being sprinkled around and everybody has been you know embraced change yeah. change uh, you know it's 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 been a little rough mm. uh, because you know obviously when you're acquired yeah you're acquired yep um, I and it, that and it means somebody else at the end of the day is calling the shots on a lot of things. And TC in Denmark used to be the headquarters for mm -hmm. the entire group. And that's not the case anymore. We're a satellite yeah. and we're a small little company compared to some of the other companies. Right. Um, and obviously, you know, there are going to be changes because mm -hmm. the two companies are run in different ways. Mm -hmm. And some people had a hard time kind of, you know, working under those under those changes. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'm not going to say whether, you know, what's right and what's wrong. It's just a different way sure, of working. Absolutely. And, you yeah, know, yeah, and at the, the end of the day, to me, it's like, you know, you can argue with a, with somebody who comes in and buys TC Group as a company, which is a pretty big company, yeah. cash on the table. Just, yeah, amazing. you know, so, you know, Music Group and, and Behringer, which is part of that, is you know has done a hell of a lot of things right. Mm -hmm. And for me, the main thing that I take away from this, which personally, just for my egoistical <laughs> sense, is, is a huge thing and that I'm really happy why this actually happened, was the fact that uh, in the old days of TC, uh, the three owners were took out personal loans, so it was always a company that was to buy the company back. It we were always on the brink of like, oh, yeah. are we going to make it? And, you know... Over the years, especially when the pedals sort of took off, it got better and better. But there was always, there was never resources to do all the things that I really wanted to do mm. uh, effect-wise and product-wise. Um, but first of all, with, with Music Group coming in, there's a lot of money. Mm -hmm. Way more money than, you know. Would, this, would the MASH thing have happened without them? Very good question. No, it wouldn't. It definitely wouldn't. Because wow. the, the thing is that there's a lot of money and... Uli Berenger, by heart, is an engineer. That's his, that's his education. So okay. he loves engineers. Right. And he is, I mean, he is willing to invest in engineers like I haven't seen before ever. Wow. So when I started working on the pedals around 10 years ago, we had two engineers. And when we got acquired, right at the point we got acquired, I think there was around eight or 10. And for guitar, just there's some mm. other engineers. But now I think we're between 35 and 40 guitar engineers. No That's way! In, in two years, so a tenfold like growth in, yeah. in, in R and D, yeah. basically. Yeah. Wow. So and obviously, what that means is that it enables us to do some stuff that we've never been able to yeah. do before, like the mesh stuff, and like some stuff that I can't really show now. But mm. you know, it basically means that because any company, 
Like the theremin that you can't talk about. Sorry? Like the theremin that you can't talk yes. about. Yes, oh, damn, that's, that's the one. That's one of the things. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> uh, okay. The thing is, though, is the, 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 uh, you've answered them, but the two questions are, is, Ber is ownership in Beringer going to make everything cheap and affordable, and are they going to cut back on... Um, is that ownership going to mean a cutback in R&D? And I, the, the answers to both those questions seems to be no. Yeah, and I think, you know, first of all, I talk to Uli a lot, and he loves the whole mess thing. I mean, that's mm. what he wants. He wants. He doesn't want, uh, you know, cheap, poorly made stuff. He wants mm. amazing, okay. great, cool, inventive stuff. It's, it's so good to hear. Yeah, yeah. So, oh, a quick question, though, because uh, you released a line of 365 yeah. different small <laughs> yeah. pedals. Yeah. And there's been a lot of questions about whether or not those are simply rehoused um, Behringer pedals. Because yeah. the Behringer had those... You, did you ever see those walking to a music shop and they literally hung in like... Um, they look like matchbox cars. They, yes, right? exactly. Yeah. They're sort of yeah. hung in a little plastic yeah. thing that, you know, and they cost the 20p. Yeah. Um, so there's been a lot of questions whether or not the that line of more affordable TC pedals was simply... The Behringer ones yeah. rehoused. Well, I, I can tell you the story behind that pretty, you know, accurate because at, a, at the end of the day, it's actually my decision and my idea to make those pedals. So the thing was that a part of my job is also to discontinue stuff. So right. I told you before I discontinued the stereo cross flanger. I also discontinued the 2290. So I'm the bad guy. Really? Yeah. Uh, not out of you know, not out of hit to the product because I had to. Um, but so Uli basically asked me to discontinue all. Of the uh, all of the old Behringer pedals, right? And I'm like, okay, I mean, it's some work, but I can do it. Uh, so I just we had been sent a ton of them, and I, to be honest, I'd never really tried them out mm. ever. Yeah. So I just took them into the studio one day and I just tried them, and you know, some of them I didn't like, to be honest, but some of them I thought actually sounded quite good. Um, there was a couple of things, pretty much in all of them, that I you know, wasn't entirely happy with. And the main thing that I wasn't happy with any of them was the actual build quality. It was basically plastic boxes yes. um, yeah. that looked a little bit like, you know, a little bit like bus pedals, to be honest. Mm -hmm. So that part I didn't like either. Mm -hmm. uh, but I mean, in terms of just the basic sound of the pedal, I actually thought they sounded pretty good. Mm. Um, so I just came up with this idea that maybe if we put them in proper, you know, rope worthy casings, and tweak the sounds at least to where I like them. Mm. Um, that we could make some really good sounding, very cheap pedals for mm. beginners. Because I remember when I grew up, I you know such a good point. A lot of the pedals I bought was just like, <laughs> to be honest, they didn't sound really good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and you know, having being able to buy a pedal for you know I don't know the UK price to be honest, but you know, fifty bucks is mm. what most of them yeah they are like forty nine the pounds yeah, yeah. Is, and, you know and. Uh, I stand behind them 100%. I yeah. think they sound great. So the answer is they are those pedals, but you have tweaked them. I You've... tweaked every single one, and the UI has been tweaked. So if there's a knob that I thought you know didn't make any sense or if there was lacking a knob or right. you know, mm -hmm. EQ options on a drive or you know if the range was weird, anything like that, yep. we basically we tweaked it's, every it's single fantastic. circuit to the point where I think that they sound good. People yep. might disagree because they're very simple pedals compared sure. to this stuff. Of course, yeah. But you know, you well, know, they definitely they are at a spot where I stand behind them 100. percent I think they sound really good. Quite fantastic. fantastic. And no, you know, nobody's forcing my arm behind you, <laughs> <laughs> saying uh. saying this. Not at all. It was it was actually my idea to begin with to right. do this. Amazing. Okay. Two more pedals. Quick, yeah. A quick look at the. So this is the pipeline. Yeah. Uh, tremolo. Tap tremolo. Yeah. So. So we can. How are we tapping? So we are tapping by pressing and holding for a little bit, and then we tap. I like that. Any tone prints available? I don't know if yet? there's any. You you tell me. I don't know. Okay. <laughs> By product. So it's, it's really new, right? Yeah, it's brand new. So the tap tempo part, at least to me, is a pretty essential part of it. I'm not the best at playing with 
anything that isn't in sync delays or or tremolos or anything like that it just kind of messes me up <laughs> <laughs> i said something before we just, we just we just had, we had a little funny that we that we uh, had, that we yeah. had to cut uh, and uh, uh, dan stands still yeah. struggling to yeah. hold on to it it's danish political uncorrectness <laughs> yeah, yeah. that i stumbled onto yeah so and lack of grasp of the english language <laughs> So no pressure, mate. I think Brent Mason was uh, demoing this, wasn't he? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. The tap, the, I already showed the tap part. So the other part that kind of goes along with this is the subdivision part over mm. here. So like I showed you guys with the uh, with the subdivision on this one, where you can get, you know, you tap quarter notes and you get quarter notes or mm -hmm. dot mm -hmm. The same goes here. So we can set it to, for example, we can set it to triple eight notes. So if I tap now. We go one, two, three, four. Nice. Which is nice for that kind of smooth, you know, traditional vibrato. How full on can we get? So, well, you've got, so that was a fairly smooth wave. I guess this is a square wave, is it? Yeah. Try this. thing about that so we, I, I guess we just can't help ourselves sometimes we just make weird things I don't know why but <laughs> so when we did the, the tremolo pedal for some reason we decided to put two tremolos inside two completely independent tremolos mm -hmm. and you can't toggle between them it's not like a fast and a slow sure speed. but what you can do is you can actually morph between them so you can either have so you set them up in the editor mm -hmm one and the other, and then there's one slider that basically goes, if it's all the way to the right, it's just the one tremolo. If it's mm -hmm. all the way to the left, it's just the other one, but then you can actually morph between them. Oh, man. So you get like totally weird waveforms with like a sine wave and a square wave combined, and this is what you hear there. It's actually, you can hear the kind of weird So curve that's of the... always in the tone print position, is it? Yeah, that will be there, but if you, you can change that to something else. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so there's like the classic two, like, you know, Vintage style mm -hmm. amp uh, tremolo, and there's the square wave, and then the uh, the tone print thing is where you can go in and go nuts and so, do silly and stuff. And do these controls then control that wave, or do you have to do that in the no, editor? No, it, it's just this. You'd have to do that in the editor. Yeah. I mean, theoretically, you could just you could actually have one. Well, I've never tried that, but you could actually have a knob a, that does a slider. You could, you could totally say, I'll just set the volume, for example, to where I like it, and then I'd have a slider so I could go like from one yep. to the other real easy. So you can just map it to that if you wanted to. Never thought of that before though, but yep, you can do that. I'm assuming this is completely digital? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, because and if we want to go, I know we're pressed on time. <laughs> it, any kind of effect that doesn't have a wet and a dry signal yep. Yep. has to have an all wet signal. Yes. Um, so in this case, it means that when you turn the pedal on, it's all digital. When you turn it off, it's all analog. Sure. Sounds good. No. Oh, it's yes, on it is. The, it's uh, on the. Uh, ah. I'll just do something. Like
So cool. Ah! So cool. Such great sounds. We haven't touched on the mimic. Can we show one more thing yeah. about the pipeline? Do yes, time please. For okay. Oh yeah. So um, we did one more silly thing. Again, it's it's here. So on top of doing the um, like the regular subdivisions, where mm -hmm. you have like quarter note or whatever. So when you play something, you know the treble will follow that. We also put in a little sequencer, so we can actually have more than one subdivision in you know basically in sequence after another so you can add up to four different ones wow which you know for more traditional amp style vibrato mm -hmm. uh, tremolo sounds a little weird but if you want to do like more i don't know racing it's a machine or i can, know, I can hear it coming yeah. through <laughs> And you can you can set those. Yeah, on the on the it, on the default sound, it's just this one. So mm -hmm. it's uh, I can't even yeah. remember quarter note and triple eight notes, something like that, I think. Mm -hmm. But you can actually set up to four different ones in succession after each other if you want to. We did one with you might as well get this. We did one with Scott Holiday from ah. Rival Sons, and um, what he wanted was basically something. He was just playing like crazy long power chords, and he wanted something that was like super slow, and then after like four bars or three bars it went like so it's like wow. so and you can set that up in there so you can mix and match any kind you want but you can do that because you can tap in yeah you can tap the the tempo so it'll always follow the music that's extremely cool and the last little bit that goes along with this is the fact that you know when you have a lot of a lot of any kind of pedal that's lfo based mm -hmm. so there's some kind of movement to it mm -hmm. Uh, typically, they'll run all the time. Mm -hmm. So you know whether the pedal is off or on. Low it's frequency always, oscillator. It's always it's always running. So when you turn the pedal on, you actually don't know where in the sequence it's going yes, to be. Yeah, which yes, is a yeah, little. Yeah. If yeah. you want something like this. So if I want something like this, I want to make sure that every time I turn it on. So I wanted to use that in say a chorus, uh, like a verse part or a chorus part or something like that. When I hit the pedal, I want to make sure that it's on yep. at exactly the right time. So you can do that. I can do it like this. So if I do like... It always resets yes, the other so that wow. you're certain that it's... It's in the right spot every yeah, time. That so that is just, so clever. You don't end up playing reggae instead because it's like... Yeah. So, that was just a little extra thing for Pipeline. Let's just quickly touch on the Mimic because it's there. Yeah. And when I saw this, I thought, how clever. <laughs> I did. I thought, because yeah. it's that, um, so you, you take us through it and tell us exactly what it is. Okay, so this comes from the fact that I'm actually a, a metal guy at heart. That's where I, I come from. My musical roots is playing metal stuff. And not don't, not don't not the this? not the not the pretty metal stuff. The you know tuned down to B, crazy ah, growling kind of cannibal metal. corpse. Yeah, I like that. My carcass. Yeah. You know some of the British bands I like a lot of Swedish bands. So I I played that for a long time. And one of the things that we always do in the studio is double, triple, or quadruple rhythm guitars to right. make them sound fatter. Um, and it. I mean, I've never done an album with any of the bands I played with where we haven't at least doubled right. the rhythm guitars. So when you go and play live, either you just go like, oh, that, we don't get that sound, too right. bad, mm -hmm. which is okay. Or some bands uh, would use some kind of pitch shifter or a chorus pedal or something like that to kind of simulate that sound. And if you listen to old, this is not just something for like the crazy metal guys. If you listen to like old school Aussie, with Randy Rhodes or yeah, yeah, Seth yeah, Wild, yeah. Yeah. if you listen to yeah. Dimebag Darrell, Pantera style, um, you know, a lot of times you'll hear when you hear the live 
you know, if you hear like a live concert, mm. you'll hear chorus, like a lot of chorus yeah, yeah, on the yeah, guitars. Yeah. And it's basically to try to, at least my idea has always been that they try to simulate the sound that they'd get from dubbing <laughs> yes, in the studio. Okay. Um, and also, you know, somebody like, uh, like Randy Rhodes would double and triple his solos as well yeah. to get a particular kind of sound. Really? I remember listening to Diary of a Madman. Yeah. And the guitar sounds of that thinking, because I've never heard anything like that up yeah. to that point. And it was just crazy good. Blimey! So all that, all that complex playing, and he's actually playing the same thing twice. He was—I mean, he was a out. force. Yeah, he it was, was a crazy, absolute crazy force. Yeah, yeah. Awesome. But it, it's a special kind of effect, and even if you go back to old Beatles, who yeah. we all love, you know, sometimes, you know, at some point they invented the ADT thing, which yeah. was artificial doubling, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and that was a certain sound. Mm. But if they wanted the old school sound of actually doubling, they would still double because ADT and real doubling isn't the same so thing. So a quick, yes. quick rewind for anyone who's lost at this point. Um, Tor's just talking about doing the same thing twice, so exactly the same thing twice or three or four times. Yeah. So you play in a rhythm part and then they rewind it and you play it again. And yeah. it gives, it's not just the same as copying it onto another track, nope. is it? Because you have You'd slight change differences. slight differences. Yeah. yeah. And it's a real key sound of, and again, apologies if that's oversimplistic, but it's a real key sound of certain recordings through the ages. Yeah. Um, so I was always annoyed that you couldn't get that sound live because, you know, adding a chorus or adding a, a pitch shifter or something like that isn't that sound. No. It's also a cool sound, but it's just not that sound. Yeah. Yeah. So we worked really hard basically analyzing. I did a bunch of like metal riffing style things. Mm -hmm quadrupled it and then I had the engineers kind of look at what's actually going on behind the scenes mm -hmm. when you do real quadrupling and then trying to emulate that in an algorithm and that's what Mimic is. It's basically just a pedal that can either double, triple or quadruple your guitar sound. Wow, okay. And, and it's Come stupid on. simple. So you can choose with the tongue switch, you can choose how many dubs you want. Mm -hmm. So one, you'll always have your dry mm -hmm. guitar signal which mm -hmm. is analog drive through. Mm -hmm. Then you can add one more, so that's two guitars you can add two, so that will be three. three guitars, or you can add three extra, and that would be four guitars. So on top of that, you have a... Because as you add more guitars, it gets louder. Yes. So you actually have the option of controlling the level of the dry signal and the, the level of the wet signal right. separately. So, But typically, for a lot of setups, you basically set them the same. But you can use it as a subtle kind of effect, and then you'd typically just crank the dry most of the time, and then you can adjust it. But for most purposes, just having them full blast is fine. And then the last one is basically, I wanted to call it number of beers or something like that. It's basically just how drunk is the extra <laughs> guitar players that you hired in the pedal? <laughs> yeah, right. I mean, are they completely sober, which in this case, they would be down here. Uh, right. Or, you know, have, are they on their, you know, second case of beer? In this case, it would be over here. Okay. Come on, I think we need a laugh. Tor, you can play in a second. So it just fattens up the sound. I like I that. Could, could, would you mind playing something? Just because yeah. you'll probably be. Able
kill one of the amps because we've got two amps going, which is going to confuse things even further. I've got so I've got it hooked up in stereo. Oh, so okay. Yeah, right. going through one amp. Right. Okay. Yeah. And when you hook it up in stereo, which is really where it shines, it it sounds good in mono, but it comes a little bit more of effect because of facing things. Yeah. yeah. Which is cool as well. Mm. But if you want that more really realistic sound. Um, stereo is definitely the way to go. And the way it's designed is that if you set it to one dub, you have dry coming out of one output, wet coming out of the other. So one doubled guitar, especially two guitar players playing into two separate amps. If you set it here, it's two wet in either side and then dry in the middle. Oh, right. And you set it down here, it's two in one side, two it's in, in the, the other. other side. Okay. No way. That is so I'm cool. Because I put it on two, yeah, and it yeah. just went, wah, yeah. man. So it's just, and I, you know, I've I've been using it both when it was a prototype mm. and uh, and after it came out, and it's it's a lot of fun. I like to use it. I play in a metal band, and I like to use it for the solo stuff, as you yeah. know, for just getting that double solo thing. But what we actually use it for, me and the rhythm guitar player in the band, and I have a little, uh, I have a little quad master. Right. Ah. Yes. Um, and uh, the way we set it up is that I have one amp for my rhythm sound, mm -hmm. a an EVH medley thing and then I have an old Marshall for my lead sound so I have wow. two totally separate aims right. for rhythm and lead and I, I was always annoyed that when I switched to the lead stuff a metal is all about being brutal and heavy and you know and it'll always be like when I switch to the lead a little bit of the brutalness would actually disappear because yeah. you know there's one rhythm guitar disappearing and suddenly I'm being all yeah, yeah, whittly yeah, yeah. whittly on top of that and that annoyed me a lot so what we actually did was that when I switched to my uh, my lead amp, the rhythm guitar player in the band actually hijacks my amp going into the quartermaster on one on one loop. So he basically he plays with his own preamp, but into the power amp of the uh, no way of the EVH with a mimic on there. So as soon as I hit that, he basically takes over my rhythm amp. So it's still nice still and, huge. and yeah. Oh, that's really that's cool. so clever. I've never so that's any, fun. Yeah. That's so clever. Wow. Yeah, Riley. So there you go. And it's a simple pedal. No tone print, no nothing. It you know, it does as advertised. It yeah, doubles yeah. guitars. Yeah, yeah. I but I love that you did it. I love that it was like this is gonna be really cool for metal players. Yeah. You know. And that you took the time because it's not a chorus. No, no, it's no. not just a modulating no. second thing. It's like no. you took the time to analyze what's going on when you double track. Yeah. That's very cool. Yeah. Thank you. That's well, all the credit goes to the engineers. That's, no, <laughs> that's just very say, cool. It's they're very the clever cool. guys. Yeah, amazing. Well, um, it's been an absolute delight and pleasure. Thanks and for having me. Fascinating. Yeah. Ah. Fascinating. Long video today, but I think with good, uh, with good reason. Yeah. yeah. Lots of stuff there. Lots of stuff there. Amazing. Okay, guys, thank you so much for watching. Please don't forget to subscribe. Massive thank you to our patrons and Patreon. Thank you guys so much. Um, also to our preferred retailers in the UK and Europe is Anderson's Music in Australia oh he's, he's throwing me he's throwing me <laughs> it's Pedal Empire in Brisbane and in the USA <laughs> Rip City Guitar <gasps> and uh, if uh, also massive thank you to everyone that's gone to our web store which is thatpedalshowstore.com and grabbed yourself a t-shirt or a <laughs> a pedal a, a, a jack a, a pedal uh, a road changing device there you go yeah a, a portable traffic light <laughs> <laughs> That'll come in handy. Yeah. We, we, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you to everyone who's bought t-shirt. Yeah. Cheers, guys. Yeah. All right. And, and biggest thanks, of course. Massive to thank you to Tor. Thank Yay! you, guys. Well, thanks for having me. That was amazing. It's been a pleasure. Oh, it's, it's been amazing. an education. It's actually. been it's been incredible. Yeah, yeah. Brilliant. All right, guys. Thanks so much. We'll see you next week. Cheers. Bye.